This video will show you how to simplify a complex fraction. There's two methods. This video will do method one. First off, a complex fraction is just a fraction divided by another fraction. These can be easy or they can be pretty complicated. Method one says this, simplify the top so that it's a single rational expression. Simplify the bottom so that it is a single rational expression. And then all you have to do is flip the bottom fraction and multiply it by the top fraction. Now, if you happen to have a monomial over a monomial, then you already have single rational expressions, both in the top and the bottom. And all you have to do is flip and multiply. Like this simple numerical example, 1 half over 3 fourths, that is a complex fraction. So we are going to take the bottom fraction, flip it upside down, and multiply it by the top fraction. So here in blue, that 1 half didn't change. In red, we did flip the bottom and make it 4 thirds. What we can do now is just a little bit of reducing. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 4 twice, and we're just left with 2 thirds. And that's a really simple example because it was just number over number. The reason the flipping of the denominator works is because 1 half over 3 fourths just means 1 half divided by 3 fourths. And you should remember that if you're going to divide fractions, you take the second fraction and you flip it upside down and multiply, which is what we did. We took the bottom, which is the second fraction, and we flipped and multiplied. Another simple example is monomial over monomial. We're going to take the bottom fraction and we're going to flip it upside down. So here's the top fraction remaining unchanged. The bottom fraction, we are flipping upside down and getting this. And because it's monomial over monomial, we can reduce individually x cancels out with x. 3 goes into 12 four times. With y over y squared, use your exponent laws. There's more y's in the bottom, so that y is going to cancel out, and it'll just be a y there. So that's going to give us just 7 over 4y. Now it gets a little more complicated when you have negative exponents mixed into this. This x plus y on the top is not going to change, but I do need to rewrite both of these. Because this says x to the negative 1, you need to remember that a negative exponent creates a fraction. So that negative exponent tells you to send that x to the denominator. So x to the negative 1 is 1 over x. Same idea for the y to the negative 1. It gives us 1 over y. The top is okay for right now. Don't look at the top. We just need to focus in on the bottom. The bottom is this idea that we have a fraction plus a fraction, we need to go through our getting a common denominator process. So with this, the two monomial denominators will be multiplied together to give me a common denominator of xy. And then we just have to look at this x to make it become xy. I need to multiply on the top and bottom by y. So y times 1 is y. Same procedure over here. This needs to be multiplied by x. x times 1 is x. That's how we end up with that in the denominator. The numerator did not change. Now, because this is a fraction on the bottom, I really like to think of this whole thing as a fraction. So I'm thinking of my x plus y as x plus y over 1. I'm taking that bottom fraction and flipping it upside down. So the xy went to the top, the y plus x went to the bottom. Now it is a multiplication problem. And we do have identical binomials, so x plus y and y plus x cancel out. All we're left with is just xy over 1, which is just xy. More complicated, let's look just at the top fraction. With the top fraction, that's this blue part, just look at this. I know it's busy up here, but look just at the blue part. I have a fraction minus a fraction. So here I've rewritten it. My common denominator is x times x plus 3. Now, a lot of people think the common denominator is just x plus 3 because, you know, there's an x and that's just the same denominator, but it is not. When you have a monomial denominator and another binomial denominator, the common denominator will be the product of the two. So I need to look at these two fractions and think about what I need to multiply by. This has got the x plus 3. What it doesn't have is the x, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x. That's how I get a new numerator of x. This had a denominator of x. What it doesn't have is x plus 3. So I'm multiplying top and bottom by x plus 3. 1 times that x plus 3 is just x plus 3. That's what the top says right there. That's all I've done. I'm not finished with the top, but that's as far as I've gotten on this step. Now just look at the bottom. This is the whole number 1, which I'm writing as 1 over 1 plus 3 over x. The common denominator is x, because x times 1 is just x. So I just have to think about what to multiply by. 
for this one to become an x, I need to multiply by x on the top and bottom. This already had the denominator I wanted, so the numerator just comes on down. So that's what this says right there. Now, on this step, this used to be a minus right here. I can erase this and show you what I did right there. This was a minus in between there. And you should remember from previous lessons that this minus needs to distribute all the way through the top. So I changed this to plus, negative, negative. Change both of those signs and distribute that through there. Kept the denominator the same and just rewrote the top as x minus x minus 3. The bottom, we had our common denominator. We kept that denominator. x plus 3 is just x plus 3. Teeny little bit of work right here. x minus x is going to go away. So all I'm going to have up in the top is a negative 3, because those canceled out over this x times x plus 3, and there's the denominator. That denominator right there is going to be flipped, and we're going to multiply. So there's the numerator staying the same, taking the denominator, and we flip it. And there's very little to cancel out. All I can cancel is that monomial x with that monomial x. x plus 3, x plus 3 that are both in the bottom do not cancel. So we end up with negative 3 and x plus 3 squared, because those x's have already canceled out. Another one with the negative exponents, the first thing I need to do is rewrite so that all the negative exponents are gone. x to the negative 1 is 1 over x. y to the negative 1, 1 over y. Same thing happens in the denominator, but those powers are squares because those are 2's. I'm going to have to deal with the top and the bottom separately, so let's just look at this blue part. I've rewritten 1 over x plus 1 over y. The common denominator is the product of x and y, which is just xy. So I need to look at this x and multiply by y on the top and bottom. So there's my new numerator. This has the y. What it doesn't have is the x. So multiply top and bottom by x. With that common denominator of xy, I can just put the numerator together to be y plus x. So that is my numerator right here. That's all the work for getting this numerator. Now, switching to the red, rewriting the problem. The common denominator is x squared times y squared. So there's my denominator. I'm going to need to multiply top and bottom by y squared. y squared times 1 is just y squared. Over here, this has the y squared. What it doesn't have is x squared. So multiply top and bottom by x squared. So I have the common denominator. I can combine the numerator into this. So that's all of my work for the denominator. Now I have single fraction over single fraction. Now I can take the bottom one and flip it upside down. Here's the numerator. Didn't change it, but this is the bottom flipped upside down. I look at this. This is the first time this has happened in the video. y squared minus x squared factors out so that let's bring this down. This part right here is right there. Just brought it right on down. All I did with this was factor out the denominator. And the reason you need to do that is that you have this y plus x and this y plus x. Those are identical binomials. They cancel out. With these monomials, I can use my exponent laws. x squared over x will leave an x in the top. That's gone. y squared over y will leave a y in the top. And that is gone. So all I have in the top is xy. And what's left in the bottom is y minus x.